Hey gang, Spade of the Ball Matrix here, and today we are taking a look at Transmetal One Air Razor. Now, I want to start off this review by saying I have multiple versions of this mold. I've got the original, which this is, the Fox Kids version, and then a version that was released later as a Herald of Unicron from um, Armada. And then I ended up with a Japanese version. Every single version I have has a different transformation for the bird mode. This is the version or this particular version, has the arms bent underneath the figure like this, and so the arms are pointing straight down to form the legs. Now, other, uh, other instructions have those arms being swiveled on the side and just in different places. It's, it's very, very strange. Um, unfortunately, all of those instructions are somewhere else. I thought I'd grip, grab them, but I didn't. Anyway. So, as you can see, the coloring on this figure is interesting. Uh, we do retain some of the original brown and gold from Air Razor's Hawk Mode, but we lose uh, a little bit of that for this weird light blue, metallic sky blue, and this gray and yellow. It's a very, very weird mode, that's to be sure. Like all Transmetal ones, this figure does have a quote-unquote vehicle mode. The vehicle mode is pretty lame, I have to admit. We're going to do that by simply grabbing the legs and folding them and pointing them straight back like that so we get something a little more streamlined. Take these blue sections and push them forward, which will push up the entire uh, wing assembly, and then take the front of the wings and detach them, and then fold them down to form pontoons. And when we fold the pontoons down, we can then fold out these other bits that will give us uh, a little bit of stability. However, you will notice that these plastic bits are a little bit worn just from the few times, okay, maybe a couple dozen times, that I've transformed it. Unfortunately, the, this, uh, this sucker does suffer a little bit from gold plastic syndrome. And if you don't know what gold plastic syndrome is, I suggest you look it up. Now, looking at the directions again, just to be on the safe side, I did get something wrong. These uh, bits are actually supposed to be pushed back in vehicle mode. And then you can fold the wings out as far as you want or do whatever you want with them. Um, kind of just get it like that. So there we have this weird pontoon mode that's just kind of stupid as vehicle modes go. It's not as bad as Cheetor's mode, but... Cheetor's mode serves a purpose of, hey, now the cat can fly. This serves the purpose of, well, nothing, really. Anyway, so uh, transformation into robot mode is pretty simple. We'll return the, the figure back to its original uh, mode here. And to start, we'll come push the uh, tail feather down, or, and then get your finger under here, and split the back of the bird open. Like that. Then that will allow us to lift that up a little bit so we can unfold the legs, and flip that all the way around thusly, like that. Then take this part on the undercarriage and fold it forward, split the bird legs apart, and fold them down to the sides and then get your finger under here and push the robot head up and the robot head getting this displayed takes a little bit of force but once you get it it's fine fold the beak down and fold everything up into place move the arms forward take the back wings and flip them up like that. Fold what was the tail feather down. Fold the feet out. Try not to break the figure. Now this figure um, does, like I said, has gold pla has a little bit of gold plastic syndrome, but that carries over to a lot of the other parts as well. It's very odd because this thing shouldn't have gold plastic syndrome, but it does. Everything on this figure does. It's just really weird. And there we go. We have an excessively top-heavy air razor. 
Now one way to mitigate that is when you fold the wings back like this, put the wing put the uh, wings straight down. Now this is one issue that I've always had. The pin on the left side of the figure is exceptionally tight for some reason and does not want to fold all the way back a lot of the times. So it'll just pop open like that. So we can uh, display the figure. Posability is severely hampered by the giant backpack that the figure has. And I mean there's really not much I can do about that. Head is on a ball joint, but it's limited by the back part here. And as you can see, the face is very avian-like, but it lacks any and all detail. There's supposed to be two different colors of orange there, but it's so subtle it might as well not be there. Arms are on ball joints at the, at the shoulder and at the elbow. And then the weapon is on a, a swivel joint. Leg, ball joint at the hip, swivel or bending joint at the knee, and then the feet can move. So, as I said, the posability is severely hampered. Now, this figure also has an armored form, or a shield form, if you will, where you take the turbines, turbines and cover the arms, and then close that up, and it doesn't really work all that well. So, should this figure be in your collection? Now, there are a couple of repaints out there that are much better looking than this. The Fox Kids repaint is about the same color scheme, but significantly brighter and a little bit more detailed. And then the Armada figure does look a little better. It's a much darker color scheme, but it works a little better and comes with a Minicon. So if you really got to have this figure, there are different options for you. Um, unfortunately, though, I'm going to have to say pass because compared to the other Transmetals, this uh, Transmetal Air Razor is not a very good figure.